Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Katz. I'm with Skyliner Drones, based in Torrance, California, and we're a uh, service provider. Uh, there's a clicker. Thank you. Uh, I think that might be why we're losing the mouse. Uh, we have um, specialize in uh, mapping, 3D modeling, and I kind of want to take what Lorraine spoke to and what Jeff highlighted really well, and kind of give some real world examples of what we're doing in the world. And uh, how people are coming up with ideas that I would never even have thought, which is the real exciting part. Um, I also am an instructor at, um, at El Camino College, community college. So I work with uh, Flying Lion, who's up for a AUVSI uh, uh, Excellence Award. So Barry Brennan teaches at four community colleges, Santa Monica, El Camino, Pasadena City, and also uh, we had one class up at uh, where the uh, College of the Canyons. So, um, so very big believer of job re-education. We not only teach a 107, it's in the continuing education. We do flight training, and then we also have a 120 hour externship as part of our program, which is a really important part. So uh, our students actually come very similar to what Jeff does is hiring his, his, his students. We do the same thing, we try to do the same thing. So these are pretty pictures. And I'm not here to talk about pretty pictures. I'm here to talk about turning those pretty pictures into data. It's a little hard to see in the back, I understand, but there's actually numbers and things overlaid here. And it's very similar to what Jeff showed in terms of the contour maps, and perfect for what Lorraine was talking about. But how are these things being used in the real world? And that's what I want to show. So people have talked about it. We're talking about taking pretty pictures and converting it to data. And if you're into Photoshop versus Illustrator, the idea is there's pixels and there's vectors. And this is actually turning things into mathematical formulas. So when you look at an image, you actually have an X, Y, and Z, so you can do stuff with it, to speak in basic terms. Uh, so the big point here, and here we'll just go right into it, but the big point is some one of the big results is a Google-like map that's six times greater resolution. That's the map I was able to figure out. So, um, so much higher resolution than Google, but more importantly, you can do stuff with it. And hopefully this will make sense in a couple of clicks. So I have four examples, and I'm gonna walk through them. One of them is a, a shopping center that I've been uh, monitoring and documenting. One's the Four Seasons Prize of Private Residences in uh, Beverly Hills. Uh, one's a hospital, and one's a wildlife preserve. So very diverse world, right? And more importantly, I think you're gonna see some creative uses of it. Not gonna go through all, the whole big discussion of it, let me just show you, uh, let's go into it. So I pre-recorded video, so I'm gonna do my absolute best to walk through it as this goes through. But uh, this is the 60 freeway. And uh, it looks like I'm mapping over the 60 freeway. I'm not flying over the 60 freeway. But this shows the resolution. This is six times. Google Earth is on the left here, right? And you can see the resolution of just incredible resolution from what a drone can provide. In the shopping center, they're building a, a Costco right here, a Home Depot. Uh, this is a, a Costco gas, really important. Uh, we have a drive through Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, and a um, uh, in an outburger, but as we as you can see, with drone photography, we can choose a point in time, and this is a time lapse, just sliding dates. As you can see, Home Depot opened up, Costco opened up. Right now, we're getting uh, these buildings opening up. Here's in an outburger about to open. So, and then we're going to slide back. But what you can do is, as the developer who's back east, they can monitor what's happening here at the shopping center. And more importantly, at any point in time, they can choose when to take a quote unquote Google Earth shot in a real high resolution. So they can document what they want to document. They can document down to very small levels also. So uh, I'm gonna zoom in in a little bit in the video and you're gonna see uh, the Costco gas station. So for the big tanks for the gas, uh, there's big tanks in the ground. So I'm comparing two more of the mosaic maps, and this might not have been being even known that we needed to do this at the time. 
right? This is something, that's one of the big things with this challenge with this project is they didn't know what the capabilities were. So for me to be able to figure out, there's the tank, can you see the tank right there? Right? And you can see that I'm going to slide it over, it's going to slide back over. You can see where, you can see underground pipes if you wanted to. And now you can see what the Costco gas station looks like. Right? And so the idea here is that in, at any point in time, the developer can look back and see the evolution. I just, I heard from um, uh, the, the same concept. So this also geo-references photos. So we do pretty photos also, and pretty photos are important, but it's the data from the photos. So it's trying, the challenge with this client was they didn't know what they wanted, or more importantly, what happens, and you'll see this out in the end. So this is a pan, panorama. You can zoom in and zoom around. But at the very end of this, uh, the software I'm using uses uh, artificial intelligence that actually can count cars in the parking lot. This is drone deployed. And so, just as an example, I'm like, so this is 250 images and all put together. And this, in this 13 acres, Costco parking lot at this point in time, had two, uh, 552 cars. I've actually counted almost within a minute. It was like instantaneous. So, did they know they wanted to count the cars in the parking lot? No. But that we can do that is amazing. The other thing that it's going to pull back and show is uh, 5.9 acres of land. There's a strip along the freeway. And so they hydro seeded it. One of their contracts with Caltrans was, hey, you're going to hydro seed this, or you're doing this development, you're going to make this green. Well, the question is, they planted it, and then we had the drought at the end of last year. It was kind of dry, and it never took. And the question is, how much vegetation is now there? So this was our last flight. We could map this. I actually put it through an AI program, and it gave us the percentage of growth, because it's spotty. It's not easy to see all in one place. And it gave us the percentage of growth, and they're able to say, hey, hydro seed vendor, in this case, you didn't meet your contractual obligation. They would have never had a, any idea that they needed to do that type of analysis when I, when I flew this until they started not having this growth. Kind of cool. Is that car counting? Is that awesome? It was like instantaneous. It's so cool. So cool. So the reason I started Skyladder was to use drone data in useful ways and, 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 and use it for business, right? Uh, the next example is Four Seasons. So this is a Four Seasons residence. I start with a, uh, a panorama. The Four Seasons private residences is in Beverly Hills. You're going to see it spin around. It's in a beautiful location. Oops. So the Four Seasons is building private residences. Basically, it's a 13-story or 12-story uh, apartment building, but they wouldn't call it apartments because these are not apartments. So that's the building right there, the crane. Uh, it's uh, being built by Webcore and Gen Genar um, uh, Development. On the left side is the um, Four Seasons Beverly Hills. If you can see the view here, it's a multi-million dollar view. That's the Hollywood sign, that's the observatory. You can see the snow on the mountains, right downtown right there, and it's gonna slide over to uh, Century City here, right? But the challenge they have was every, these, because you have this beautiful view, of course, this is not a cheap property. And this, that's the big point here. They're, they're building the top three floors, $20 million, and the penthouse is $50 million. Right. So, if you're spending $20 million or $50 million, you're going to want to customize it. Well, the minute they pour the concrete and they ask somebody asks for an elevator to be put in, what's going to happen? They don't need to know, they need to know what's there. So, what we've done is we went in, we mapped this. So, instead of using <coughs> x-ray machines after the fact of doing concrete pours, and what the company did, Webcore did, is they overlaid, and you'll see, I'll zoom in some so you can see the lines, they overlaid the floor plan onto this map of the top of the before the pour. So they can see, hey, we're gonna put a 
elevator right here, is that going to have high tension, you know, does it have high, um, you know, does it have rebar that's going to be structurally um, uh, important? Does it have um, certain utilities going through there? So they don't have to x-ray the, the, the top of the floor, they can actually see it in the plans. So the developer, the, the, um, the contractor is real excited by it and the developer loves it because when the, when the high, high value people walk in and say, I want to customize this, they can actually see where they could customize and where they can't customize. And for the cost of doing the drone flights, it's less than what the cost of doing an x-ray for like a day was for me to fly three times. So the cost is just so cost effective. Meet use case? Yeah. Who would have thunk, right? Who would have thunk? And the best thing was, I'm standing at the top of this building, avoiding the crane it is a very important piece to, from a safety standpoint. And the superintendent says to me, we should be doing this for every poor. <laughs> what do you think I said? I said, absolutely. You should be doing this every time you do a poor. Right? Whether it's a high-rise building and $20 million, or it's a Home Depot floor, it doesn't matter. Documenting what we would call as as-built, what really was built, not what's based on the plans, but what was really built is what this is. The next example is, is a uh, prototype I did for a architecture firm. And so, again, looks like a pretty picture. This is not a pretty picture. This is actually a little company in Mary Hospital and an office building, the medical office building next door in Torrance, California. And I did this as a prototype for an architecture firm. And their question is, hey, can I model a neighborhood that I'm going to remodel a hospital and then put in buildings and not take out buildings and give my client a realistic view of what it's going to look like in the context of the neighborhood? And that's what this is. So this is not a photograph. This is actually a 3D model created by drones using photogrammetry like Lorraine's talked about and like Jeff was talking about. And for example, they might want to put a building here at the corner right there. If they put a building in or take a building out, you'll see what's behind it because it's a 3D model, right? In real world view. You could fly down the street, you could process down, you know, you could do a variety of things. But what this allowed the architecture firm to do is to put their designs in the context of the real world environment. Architecture. Without trying to, most of the time you see these just basic block buildings and such. Right? Pretty neat. 3 well. Very simple flight, really quick to do. Processing was probably a couple few hours, about four hours. And it talk, talk about invaluable value uh, for somebody to play what if scenarios with different designs. And also, um, not just different designs, but also where they might want to place a building and things like that. Very, very cutting edge from an innovation standpoint. And the last one is a pro bono job I've done. Is um, in, in Torrance, California, where I live, there is a marsh. And uh, the Madrona Marsh is just adjacent, if you know Del Amo Shopping Center, right here, is right here. This is the largest mall on the West Coast, right? So it's a very big place. And in this area right here, it's about a quarter mile around each side, is a, a freshwater marsh. And it fills up during the during the winter from rain, and then it dries up during the summer. And this is more dry. So this is in January this year, January 11th, and they're predicting a big rainstorm, about three three point eight inches is what came. And one of the things that I've been challenged to try to help these guys figure out, and I was flying orbits around and taking pictures from the same spot, was how do I show the changing water levels? And as you'll see, take a look at the, the, the areas right here, right here. You'll see as I slide across, what you would typically have to do from a satellite, right, at, or at 5,000 feet in an airplane, you can now do it a drone at 200 feet here and get extremely high resolution. But if I zoomed in, you would see it. I, I didn't zoom in. But more importantly, see how things dried up and how things got wet, especially right here in this area right here right here, and you'll see the sump even fill up. So the, the idea here is how do we educate the students, there's a lot of elementary school students in the community that come here, that the water levels change. 
And once I figured out mapping, this took me a it took me a while to figure out, right? Figure, once I figured out and started doing mapping, seeing how it could apply to a simple little idea of water filling up in a, in, in a freshwater preserve, um, it really changed it. And it's something that's really valuable for them, for the naturalists there that actually manage this preserve. Um, they find that uh, just to be, to be a real valuable tool. So uh, hopefully those are kind of real world examples of uh, what GIS and data can do in a pretty diverse different environments. So uh, that's what I have.